Hi, my name is Robert Sloan, and I'm here to talk about oil pastels and color theory. Oil pastels are an inexpensive medium. Literally anybody can afford this. Little kids, grade school kids, could afford a box of oil pastels. Color is something that takes a lot of work, but we'll try and make it a little simpler. Let's get started. These are the pastels I'll be using for the demo. They're Pentels. This set is five bucks and a little change from Blick. Fifty colors, five bucks. You can't beat that for a color medium. They're excellent quality. These are my favorite of the inexpensive pastels. Second favorite is Low Cornell, which runs about the same price. You get sixty colors for five bucks. Underneath the box, there's, well, here it is. Nice piece of Canson My Tense paper. This is the white sheet from a multicolor pad that's again about five bucks and change. So you can kit up for this medium for as little as ten bucks. Mind you, with the price of shipping, it being seven bucks for basic order, you might want to order more stuff than that from Blick. But they have a nice coupon system and, you know, if you want to tuck this in on the side with your next bunch of mat boards or something, go for it. Anybody can afford oil pastels. They're about this price, maybe a buck or two more at Hobby Lobby and other stores. Now, now that we've got a look at what we're doing with the materials, now here's the box open. These are the colors we'll be using. Nice big range of 50. If you have Low Cornell or another brand, don't worry about it. We won't be so much using exact colors as general colors. We'll start with the color wheel. Right at the top of the color wheel, you get yellow. This is so basic. This is something you probably got in kindergarten, but I'm going to go over it again anyway. You want a nice, bright, clean red down in the corner, making a triangular arrangement. And then a nice, clear, medium blue, not too purplish, not too reddish. Actually, We'll go for the slightly purpler one because we're going to get a better green out of it that way. You now have three primaries. These colors can mix anything. However, that doesn't take into account the cast of the pigments. Let's put a little patch of the same blue here. because We're going to show mixed colors and also pure colors. Go back to the red that I used. Put it a little over the blue. See, you've got a slightly grayish violet going on there. Put it by itself very, very, very lightly between it and the yellow. Pick up the yellow again. Let's see if we get an orange or if we get mud. Ah, oh, we're getting orange. Okay, that yellow's a good mixer. Now, how good is it for making green? Oh, this is a good green. We're getting a good green here. Now, just to compare, let's add the pure colors, the pure secondaries that appear in the set. Here's the green that came with the box. It's almost an electric green. Here's a nice strong orange that came with the box. A little bit more yellow. And uh, purple. Let's find a good purple here. Ah, yeah, this is a nice one. So these are your basic six spectrum hues. Primaries, secondaries. Between them, you get tertiaries. What happens if I put a little patch of the orange and run over it with the yellow? Here we go. It's a beautiful yellow-orange. Now pick up the orange again. Get a mixing patch going. So you could even be doing this in a smaller set. Go over it with the red. And you get red. So let's try using the lighter color over the dark to make it a better mix. There we go. Putting a little more yellow in with it, you get a red-orange. Red-violet. Okay, here's the nice violet cast red again. Let's get a fair amount of it on there because the blue is going to be strong. Put that faintly purple cast blue over it and now go back with red again try and get a good red purple going 
Yeah, you can tell. Now over here, because we want it to have more of a bluish cast, we'll put the red underneath. And then really go strong with the blue over it. And you can see it's still more purple than the blue. Let's try blue with green over it. Get a good blue-green going. I love that color. I do reefs all the time. Blue-green is a serious favorite. And then we'll put the green very lightly over here to do the yellow. When you are mixing colors, test your mixtures before you use them. It's never 50-50 to get exactly the hue you want. Or unless you found out that it was 50-50 to get the hue you want. Also, take a bit of paper, toilet paper, Kleenex or whatever, and wipe off your oil pastels when you've mixed them into another color. That seriously helps. Now in the previous video, you'll notice we dealt with crumbs. You're going to see a few of them right on this. There's an orange crumb here in the orange mix. Let's mash that back in. There's a blue crumb here. Tap and get it off. And I see a crumb over there on the green. That is something that when you're doing a serious finished artwork, you want to watch out for and just deal with the crumbs when you get them. Remove them with a scraper. Tap them off or blend them in by pressing with a scraper. A butter knife will do. I mean, people always say matte knife or pellet knife, but if you have a butter knife that's not serrated, it'll work for a pellet knife. We're talking the super cheap. Now, of course, you've got all these colors in the box that are not obviously made up of the primaries or the secondaries. They're also tertiaries. You got brown. You got a reddish brown. You got a greenish gray. Where do all these come from? Well, you get tints and shades by mixing white with a color to get tints. That light pink that looks like a uh, red-orange tint to me. It's a little more peach than pure red. This pink looks like it's more of a pure red tint, and it's not as strong a tint. You can see that there's less pink in it. The more actual colors you have, the easier it is to grab some of these without having to mix them from scratch. You can get these colors by mixing the primaries and secondaries. It just takes a lot of work. In pastels, any kind of pastels, you're going to have more fun if you have a large set with plenty of premixed colors to mix because you can get some beautiful effects. Let's look at this brown. Shade it up here. Shade it lightly, lightly, lightly. And we're going to start going over it with something else, like say that orangey peach that we had. <coughs> this is starting to look a little more like a skin tone, isn't it? Oh yeah. And now, now that we've got this blend going, let's go back over that with white and get in some highlights and also cool this batch of it that's right at the end. You can get beautiful soft edge transitions by making little circular strokes when you're doing the second and third layers. This is also a good way to get rid of the little crumples. Just press on them again with the stick. You can keep mixing other colors in. Let's see, now I want a little blush on this person's cheek. So right over that cooled bit, we're going to shade toward the brush on, blush on her cheek with the blush pink. And look at that. Look at how that's going. I can shade, keep on going. Now we got another dark shadow coming in. Get some of this brown. Sudden dark. Maybe that's her hair. Okay, let's get some yellow ochre into the hair and streak in hair texture. There you go. See, that's all the colors you might be using if you're doing a portrait. And they're pre-mixed when you're starting with a large set. So that's basic color theory. Let's move on to some other things. 